If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides Align Wednesdays. Your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach, spiritual business coach. Yeah, I can talk this morning. And, and I'm here as always with my best friend in Boquete, Catherine Loranger. Loranger, I will get this right. Loranger. <laughs> Loranger. So, Loranger. Did I still say it wrong? I don't hear the difference. So you're saying Loranger. It's Loranger. Loranger. All right. Loranger. Loranger. Laranger. Low Ranger. <laughs> Laranger. You, know, you know, it's all good. <laughs> it's all good, my, my friend. Best friend. I can't all say her name. <laughs> Meh. Meh. <laughs> Meh. <laughs> Not a big deal. Not a big Catherine's deal to business, me. Spiritual business coach, too. And she's awesome, regardless of whether or not I can say her name. So, <laughs> so here we go. Today, we're going to talk about how do I use my intuition to help me grow my business. And so I'm excited to talk about this because, you know, you and I talk about this somewhat often, actually, with mm -hmm. the stuff that we do and the manifestation and all the things. So mm -hmm. um, I'm excited to share this information with everybody else so that they get, a, get to have a sense of it, too. So mm -hmm. why don't you start us out with this one? Yeah. So I thought as I was preparing for the episode, I thought that what we could maybe do is kind of go through, first of all, what is intuition? How does it show up for people? What is it not? So how do you know when that's not your intuition talking to you? And then how do you use it in your business? How does that sound to you? I love how organized you are. Let's do it. Yes. Because yeah. I, my brain is, yes. Yes. Is, I appreciate that about is, you developed on both sides. So, so, so <laughs> intuition. So, so maybe I'll kind of give you my take on it and then you can give me your take on it. So my take on intuition is that it is a way of accessing universal intelligence, quantum field, God, ground overall design information in the unseen that everybody has access to. So when you learn to work with your intuition, you're actually able to access that information that's out there already. So that's, that's kind of my take on it. What's your take on it? So when I talk about intuition, I talk about it from a perspective of using your third eye versus using your guides, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're using your third eye, the thing that most people think of as their intuition is the receiver on your third eye. And so the receiver is what picks up on sort of the energies around you. So it'll be things that, you know, like you think of somebody you haven't talked to in 20 years and they call you, right? That sort of thing. And then the transmitter is what, when you ask a specific question and you go out to the Akashic records and get the information and bring it back. Right. And so that is also in the larger scope of what we're going to talk about today that will be included in what we call intuition right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the third way is through accessing your guides, which is done through your crown chakra. Third eye mm -hmm. is, is sixth chakra. And mm -hmm. so through your crown chakra, you talk to your guides and your higher self and ascended masters and, you know, angels and all of that, right? Mm -hmm. And then, so that is a third pathway to getting information. And so, so yeah, totally we're going to have a really interesting- how I approach it. Yeah, yes. totally. Which like is it why fits, we do this, obviously, right? right? Yeah, like it yeah. fits for sure. And it's just a very different, yeah, different well, approach yeah. to it. So yeah, this is going to be fun. It is. I love yeah. this. Okay. <laughs> so what's the next question? Um, how does, well, how does it show up? And you kind of talked about that, right? So for yeah. you, you're talking about it. It's through your, your, your third eye, your crown chakra, accessing Akashic records, so for me, when I talk about intuition, it can, it can show up differently for different people. And part of the journey is actually discovering how does it speak to you? So when we talk about the clairs, you know, clairsentient, clairvoyant, claircognizant, all of those ways, those can be some ways that it shows up for you, but definitely ask, it, it often starts with an intention 
or a question to the universe, because that's the information you're saying, I want to get this information. But then the more that you develop it, the more that you're actually open to those, those kind of hits coming in, the guides coming in without having to specifically ask that question. So for some people, it can be, it can be kind of like a, like a feeling for some people, it might be like they ask a question and then they see a sign, they see a billboard or they hear a song or like you said, somebody kind of calls them out of the blue. For some people, it can be in their dreams. It can be a really powerful way to access it is to, to just write that question or hold that question and then set that intention when you go to sleep. And then often when you wake up, you have an answer. Free writing can be one way of accessing it. Going into the, into the, the realm of possibility. So meditation, obviously like stilling your mind can be a great way to access it as well. I think it was, was it Edison who went into the land of possibility and what he would do was he would ask a question and then he would, he had this rocking chair and he would, he would go into kind of like a meditative state, trance state, holding a rock in his hand. And so if he fell asleep, the rock would actually fall and wake him up. So he wanted to be in that land of possibility and and kind of accessing those those intuitive guides and ideas and insights but not actually going into the sleep state so that is actually a theta state and it's also known as the liminal state and so yes that's a great way to access your the collective unconscious to access your your higher self and to talk to your guides. Everything that you just said is what I tell people to access their spirit guides. I my guides will talk to me by giving me the same messages in six different ways. <laughs> so like I'll uh-huh. hear the same thing multiple times. Like that's why I know that June seventeenth is going to be a big time for my business, which I think this is going to be coming out long after that. So, but. I know, you know, we're recording this on June 3rd right now. And so uh, that's how I know that that's going to be the case because, yeah, because the universe gave me that number multiple times in a single day. And I was like, oh, okay. I got 617 multiple times in a day. And I was like, oh, okay. When I asked what it was about, they said, oh, it's the date. And I'm like, oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. So I've been planning everything to be ready for that. Right. (laughs) And, And what I'm hearing there, Kelly, is there's this awareness, right? So for, for some people, you know, they might be seeing those numbers, but there's not, they're not making a connection to it. So there's definitely, there's a, there's a a piece around kind of opening yourself to being aware and noticing how it's showing up. So you're, you're noticing the whispers before you get the two by four. Yes. Yeah. And, and I call that affectionately the clue by four to the forehead. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. I Move. joke that I was yeah. born with a flat spot on the, I actually do have a flat spot on the back of my head because I'm like, I'm going to take the hard way so many times. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, like, don't, it's just not worth it. <laughs> That's hysterical. Yeah. So the, the upshot is that, you know, the only difference is when you are, when you go through your third eye, you're doing things in a well, the receiver side of the third eye is picking up on the things that are around you, right? And so that tends to be things that are just sort of sitting in the ethers around you, which may or may not be messages from your guides, right? But it could just be, you know, people are thinking about you or there's energies in the space you're in or whatever, right? The the transmitter side is where you are consciously going out and getting information from the Akashic. And so let me define the Akashic for people because we haven't done that yet. The Akashic records are the equivalent of the, we are living in the eternal moment of now, right? So the Akashic records are everything that ever has or ever will happen in the eternal moment of now, right? So you're literally just going into the database, right? We'll just call it a database of everything that ever has or ever will happen and looking for the, and doing a search, right? So that's just, that's a simple way of understanding how the Akashic records work. And so that's a conscious effort. The the rest of what we're talking about is we ask a question and then we wait to receive an answer. And that answer could come immediately or could come two days from now, right? Or a month from now, you know, whatever. 
not usually that long though. And the transmitter is more about, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go look this up and pick it up and to bring it back. Right. It's, it's an immediate thing that you are actively doing rather than a question you're asking and then waiting for a response. Mm -hmm. So it's a slightly different process, Mm -hmm. but yeah, everything you've, you've described is very specifically good for anything in your intuitive field or you're talking to your guides or your higher self or your angels or anything like that. You do mm-hmm. want to be specific about who you're asking so that they know you're asking them. It's kind of like, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but if you have a crowd of people sitting around and somebody says, call 911 and they just say it to the crowd, everyone will assume somebody else is doing it. Mm-hmm. And so you have to look at a single person and tell them, call 911 because otherwise no one will do it. And the, mm-hmm. it's kind of the same thing with your guides. You got to ask them. <laughs> you know, it's like, I'm asking mm-hmm. my guides. I'm asking my angels. I'm asking my higher self. I'm asking, you know, or I'm asking everybody, mm-hmm. please all give me an answer. Cause sometimes mm-hmm. that's helpful too. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. angels won't do anything unless specifically asked. Mm-hmm. So they can't, it's in their, it's in their, uh, source code. Mm-hmm. <laughs> as long as we're using tech metaphors today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's interesting because when I access intuition, I haven't been as specific in terms of like, sometimes I'll say I'm asking my angels or guides, but sometimes it's just like, I'm just asking the universe. And so for me, that kind of, and I've obviously like, I'm, I've I've already got a filter on what I mean by the universe. So there's certain things I'm not asking this question of, which kind of brings me into the next, the next thing I thought we could talk about is what is intuition not. So sometimes our, our fears, our paradigms, our patterns, our resistance can, can actually show up and try to trick us into thinking it's intuition. So it, if it's feeling panicky, anxious, constrictive, anything like that, that's not your intuition. Like your intuition is going to feel calm, right? It's yeah. coming, it's coming from the higher power, higher source. So it's, it's not rushed. It's not, you know, there's not that kind of panicky urgency sense to it. It's it's going to feel, ah, right. And the more you develop that relationship with it, it's like you, you pick up the phone and your best friend is calling, you recognize their voice. So it's the same with your intuition. When you're, when you're practicing, it gets louder and louder and you recognize it more easily and more quickly. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely agree with that. And I have nothing to add. You said that very oh. well. Oh, well, there you go. Okay. <laughs> So then let's, let's get to the juicy stuff. So how do you use it then to grow your business? So there's so many different ways you can use it to grow your business. So when I do business energy reviews for people, right? One of the things that I'll look at sometimes uh, if they're launching a new marketing campaign, right? When we launch the podcast, this podcast, I and my students who I'm teaching how to do this process, we all looked at the podcast. And we said, okay, what's it look like? And and the answer universally from every person who looked at it was, okay, it's going to be a a slow, 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 kaboom. Right. And the kaboom will not take that long. Right. And then, you know, it'll, it'll blow up. And so, you know, that was good for us to know so that I, I could look at the numbers and be like, yep, that's what we expected because that's what the, the spiritual world said. And okay. Now, if we had looked at it and went, la, 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 right? <laughs> then, then I would have rethought doing this, this particular format of the podcast. I would have said, well, maybe this isn't the right format. Maybe this isn't what we're doing. Maybe I should rethink it. That sort of thing, because you can test what you're doing before you put your time and your money into it. You can test it energetically. You can look at the possibility lines. You can say, okay, well, what if I did this instead of that? What if I had this co-host instead of that co-host? What if I you know, mm-hmm. took this angle on it instead of that angle? All of the things, right? And you can look at all of those pieces and be like, oh, okay. So yeah, that makes sense. So marketing is one of the best ways to do that. You can also use it when you're going to do mergers and acquisitions. You can see whether or not it's going to be a good fit. I did. I don't, did I tell you the story about the guy who was a publisher who was going to join another publishing company? I can't remember who I told what stories to anymore. <laughs> but you're looking like you don't know it. So yeah, we'll talk I'm about blanking. it anyway. Lincoln. So I had a friend who was looking, he's a publisher. He's worked as publisher before he was looking at joining another publishing company. And I, he said, what do you think? Take a look at it for me. And I looked at it and I was like, I see you as this little deflated balloon hanging off the side of this monstrous building. 
and you're not integrated into the process. You're just sort of out there by yourself. And, and, you know, once the initial excitement of being a balloon deflates, then you're just hanging there and nothing good comes of it. And he's like, well, what would be better? And so I started describing for him. I'm like, okay, so I'm seeing this person. They're not, they're not in your country. I, I feel like they're in like Australia in that area. And I feel like there's, you know, there's this, he's a younger guy, he's in his thirties, he's got dark hair, you know, there's, there's going to be a really good synergy there, blah, 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 blah. And off we go. And, and he starts laughing and I'm like, what are you, what are you laughing about? He's like, that's my son. I've been thinking about partnering with him. He lives in Australia. And I'm like, it would be a really good, really good match for you guys. And it would, it would result in really good things for you. And so, you know, that sort of thing is another way to use your intuition is to, to look at those types of things. And, um, I've been talking for a while. Why don't you, why don't you say something that I've got some more probably. So, yeah, just, I'm just thinking about an example. So this is, you know, because sometimes your intuition is going to talk to you and it might not make sense to your logical brain. So I'm thinking about this woman who was, she was out of a job. She's like looking for a new job. She's like, you know, looking, 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 putting all this energy into it. And she was supposed to go to this, um, this event. It was like a singles mixer at her, at her church. And she's like, well, I don't have time for that. That doesn't make any sense. I'm, you know, I'm not going to find a job there. I'm not looking for a partner. So she, she kind of ignored it. And then she just kept getting this message, go to the singles mixer, go to the singles mixer, go. She's like, finally, okay, I'll go to the singles mixer. So she gets there late and the only spot left is it was like a dinner thing side this older gentleman so she goes and she sits down and they just start chatting and you know he asked her you know you know what she does and she starts to tell him he says oh well, do you know about this and she says yeah and do you know about this and yeah and do you know about this and he's like well I'm actually looking to hire someone to do these <laughs> exact same things right here right now today right and so by listening to that intuition and then here's the kicker following it yeah right I follow <laughs> Yeah. Like you've actually got to follow it and listen to those nudges, those nudges, those nudges. And she found this like amazing position that developed into something so much bigger than she thought was possible for herself. So yeah. it's not, you know, it's not always, you know, sometimes it's like, take this turn here when you're starting to develop it or, or get this part, you know, a turn here and you're going to get a parking spot or don't take this road or bring an umbrella today. It's going to rain. And it's like nice and sunny out and you don't bring it and then it rains. So it, it can be really subtle like that when you get started. Mm -hmm. So, so listen and act on those nudges because you're, it's again, you're developing that relationship with it. So you want to be able to get those those kind of more significant messages that are going to impact your business, but it starts with listening to the small ones. Yeah. And I will say that I give my students some instructions on this on ways mm -hmm. to build their muscles. And mm -hmm. so what I do is I say, start driving or walking by intuition. Mm -hmm. And so just every time you come to a, an, in a space where you can turn, ask yourself, which way should I go? Yeah. And just wait until you get a response. Sometimes it's going to be pressure on one side of your face or the other. Mm -hmm. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's going to be a feeling or an mm -hmm. intuition or a thought or a, you know, mm -hmm. I just kind of want to go this way. You know, I don't know why. And that's okay. Just follow it, follow it, follow it. And, you know, yeah. don't, don't go with the expectation that anything's going to be at the other end because yes. then we get into goal setting, right? That's when yes. we get into, you know, I've got to get to the place. No, no, no. This is about being in the moment. This yeah. only works in the present moment. So if you are mm -hmm. in the, uh, where am I going? What am I doing? What's coming? I don't know, blah, 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 blah. In your head, you won't be able to hear any of this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You have to just be with what it is, have no expectation and be in curiosity as to where the universe takes you. And mm -hmm. walking by intuition is not necessarily going to take you someplace, but it might, right? It's just practice yeah. and building the muscles. So like we're, yeah. we're getting started doing our Mamma Mia rehearsals. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the things I'm working with the, the, uh, I'm the music director and the lead in the show. And, and one of the things I'm working with people on is, to, is strengthening their voice, right? It's a muscle. You have to use it every single day and sing every single day in order to build up the strength in your voice. Intuition works exactly the same way, right? You have to work every single day to build up your muscle to be able to uh, hear it more effectively. And mm-hmm. that is done by doing exercises to build it and asking questions on a regular basis. Cause that's the thing we forget yeah. to do, right? We forget to yeah. ask. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And you know, it can also show up as synchronicities. Oh yes. Oh my God. I remember, and this is like one of those, like, I'm not going to get the answer obviously until I die because this, this is past, but I was traveling. I was flying from uh, Nanaimo, British Columbia to Istanbul, Turkey. And so I went over to Vancouver and I was flying from Vancouver to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Istanbul. And so I noticed, and like big planes, right? Lots of people going lots of different places. So I noticed these people, this couple on the flight from Vancouver to Istanbul, or sorry, Vancouver to Amsterdam and like, whatever, not a big deal. And then I noticed them again on the flight from Amsterdam to Istanbul. And so Istanbul is like, I don't know, like like 80 billion million people like it's a huge city it was at that time the population of Istanbul was bigger than the population of Canada so a lot of people so I met I met my friends there got to the airport met my friends we went to this restaurant the same people were at the restaurant the (laughs) same people and there was this nudge to go talk to them and I didn't Oh, I know. So it's like, oh, like, where would that have, where would that have gone? Right. Like how, so, so follow those synchronicities, right? Just be aware and notice unattached and then follow them, follow them. So like I said, I'm not going to get that answer until I, until I'm in, in the non-physical form, but uh, yeah, I'm really curious about what that would have been about. Yeah, I, I, so I, I don't think I've ever told anybody this story before, but speaking of missed connections, right? I, I got this letter, snail mail letter in the mid 90s from what sounded like, like the Illuminati, right? Mm-hmm. It, it, it was this invitation letter that was very cagey. And it was like, you will only get this invitation once. And, you know, and, da, da, da. Mm-hmm. and it sounded, you know, there were so many chain letters going around at the time that it sounded uh, almost like a chain letter. And I was just yeah. like, I don't know about this. And I'm not, I'm, and I just sat there and I just, I never responded to it. And in the back of my head, all this time, I'm like, I wonder if I would be in some sort of massive cabal. You know? Right. <laughs> and how would that have changed my life if I had yeah. answered and said yes to that? Right. I'm just like, yeah. or maybe it was just crap, you know, who knows, yeah. but I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to my life review to figure that one out. <laughs> Right. I know. Yeah. There's, and if yeah. It was, there's... And you're listening now, you know, send me the invitation again. I'll answer it just to find out. You know? Same, same. I know in... it's only supposed yeah. to come once, but Hey, you know, I'm calling you out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Misconnections for things that you do that, that you, you don't follow your intuition. Right. And mm-hmm. I didn't really, actually, honestly, I didn't have a clear intuition on that. I yeah. wasn't, I wasn't sure I was, it, Although I will say it scared me, which mm-hmm. oftentimes when things scare you, they're the things that change you most significantly. Mm. And so, you know, sometimes it's, it, so it's a, it's a, it's not a dread scare. It's a, yes. oh my God, scare, right? Yeah. It's, a, yeah. Yeah. it's that energy, yeah. not the dread. Yeah. Dread, yeah, no, the dread you is you don't want to do the dreads. Yeah. Don't do the dreads. Don't <laughs> yeah, do the dreads. Stay away right? from the dread yeah. scare. But the, oh is almost always something that is actually, I, I would go so far as to say is always something that's going to actually significantly change you, grow you, impact your life in a good way. It will be challenging, but it will be mm-hmm. absolutely for in your best interest. And so, mm-hmm. um, you yes. know, those sorts Stay of things. And I didn't know scare. that at the time. Yeah. I didn't know that at the time yeah. I was in my mid twenties yeah. and yeah. I just didn't know. So, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, now I, I tell people that, you know, people, people tell me that when they come into the programs that I run into the mm-hmm. welcome to the woo or the woo squared program, they're like, I'm a little scared. I'm like, is yeah. it a little excited scared? And they're like, yeah, kind of, 
but it kind of yeah. kind of like oh my god scared and i'm like yes yeah. perfect that means yeah. you're you're you know it's gonna work right yeah i get this i get the same yeah i yeah. get this with my clients there's yeah. this there is this you know this this knowing that this is the right step to take and yet in taking the step it's it's going to shift your life it's going right. to shift your life and so your existing life is 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 fighting for its its survival right right yeah. But when you want something different, something better, something more expanded, something, you know, more fulfilling, that's not in the current life that you're living. Right. And so, you know, but, but the step of getting there is stepping into the abyss, right? You're stepping totally. into the unknown. Yeah, absolutely. You don't know what's going to happen. Some things are going to fall away. Some things are going to come mm-hmm. together. You don't mm-hmm. have a lot of control over some of that, you know, because you've made the choice and the, then things yeah. shift and that happens, yeah. right? Yeah. And so in, at some point we, we just get like freaked out. And so, you know, what I tell people is lean into your ability to adapt rather than your ability to control mm. because you can't control everything and you can only control yourself. In fact, everything else is an illusion, right? Mm. So you lean into your ability to adapt and your ability to, to be okay in all situations. Right. Mm-hmm. And when you do that, then go figure suddenly, woohoo, everything mm. is working. Mm. And that's the sort of thing that uh, you need to lean into if you're going to get past that fear of the unknown. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And when you, when you start to lean into the, and, and again, the language I use is what would you love? What, what feels expansive? What's life giving to you? Right. You don't need to get into the nitty gritty and name it this and name it that and deconstruct this and deconstruct that. But just like everybody knows, like, what would I love? What feels expansive? What feels constrictive? And when you start to lean into step into what feels expansive, of course, it's going to feel terrifying. And so I'm just, I'm thinking about this one client who she said yes to like a 12 month container in working with me. And she was the most she'd ever invested before. And she, she said, yeah, she's like, I don't know how I'm going to pay for it, but this is right. My it's, it's a, it's a full body. Yes. For me, that, that pucker factor that you talked about, <laughs> yeah. Kelly, right. That's the kind of like, Whoa, like, ah, I don't know. I haven't done this before. And so literally after she said yes, three days later, her accountant calls her and says like, Oh, you need to take $30,000 more out of your business. You're not taking enough money out of your business. Like it's so, so she has more money in her business than she knew she had. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah That's all. Right? It was all there to begin with. It was all there to begin with her other clients where they say yes. And then, oh, like, here's this, like, oh, like, here's like $10,000 just like showed up in your life. Right. So when you, and, and the point of this is when you lean into your intuition, you, you notice the pucker factor, but you still take the step the universe is literally waiting on the other side to support you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's been my experience too. Mm -hmm. You know, I hired somebody to help me get this podcast known and the pucker factor was there. Oh yes. (laughs) The pucker pucker factor. (laughs) And the money showed up the, like the two days after I I agreed to pay it. It was just like Mm -hmm. the money already Mm -hmm. just came into the business. And it was just like, Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll mm-hmm. go with that, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it was, it was very interesting. So, you know, these are the sorts of things that, that, that we do when we lean into our intuition. Did mm-hmm. you have another thing on your list before we finish up for the day? No, that was a, just how to use in your business. And so one, just one thing I'll say about that to, to before we kind of complete is, you can also use your intuition to, to know, like, is this the right business for me? Should I Mm. even be here? Right. Because I think a lot of times we can get, we make an agreement with the current life that we're living and we don't give ourselves permission to really check in if that's what we want to be doing. And so again, the question, do I love this, right? Your intuition is going to let you know if it's a yes or a no. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love all of it. So yeah, this is great. All right. Well, that's what we have for you this week for Align Wednesdays. We will be back tomorrow with Thursday Thoughts. 
And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And remember, what you focus on expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. We'll see you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, I'm